my friends, my name is Álvaro Vitran. I am a cellist from Mexico. I am a, the cellist of Cuarteto Latinoamericano. But in this occasion I'm here to talk about cello repertoire from Latin America. I, I was born in Chile and I arrived in Mexico in 1974 at age 15. And uh, I have seen an incredible improvement on the cello level in these uh, almost 50 years since then. The level of the cello has improved so much that there are some fantastic cellists uh, in Mexico nowadays and I am very, very happy to be a teacher in the three main music schools in the, in the country, namely the Conservatorio Nacional de Musica, the Universidad Nacional Autónoma, UNAM, and uh, Centro Cultural Olinjo Litzli. I have been teaching now for 40 years, I am, and I am um, proud to say that I have developed them. Um, couple of generations, new generations of cellists in Mexico and in Latin America. I also had the privilege of being very close to El Sistema in Venezuela, which you, you all know, which was a fantastic, fantastic moment in the history of music in, Ameri in Latin America. Since we created there the um, Academia Latinoamericana de Cuartetos de Cuerda, Latin American Academy for String Quartets. That gave me the opportunity of going to Venezuela at least four times a year for 15 years. And I got to meet all these amazing musicians, including a great generation of young cellists. Um, and then I had the pleasure of meeting Horacio Contreras and Germán Marcano, by the way. Uh, the level of cello playing in Venezuela is, is amazing. Uh, most of the um, top cellists of that generation are now working outside of Venezuela. Many of them are here in Mexico and, uh, and many of them are my friends. So in, other, in a few words I think that the level of cello playing in Latin America in general has improved a lot and um, in Brazil, in Venezuela, Mexico, it's great to see nowadays fantastic cellists, which also have now an international projection. Uh, with my quartet, we have uh, devoted many, many years on exploring the repertoire and the composers of Latin America, and that has given me the opportunity of learn what pieces those composers have written also for the cello. And uh, I have found many, many great pieces in our repertoire, in our continent. Um, I would say, for example, Arturo Márquez, who is very famous for his Danzón Number no. 2 for orchestra, has also written a beautiful Danzón Number no. 5, uh, also called Portales de Madrugada, for cello and piano. He has also written a beautiful cello concerto. Uh, another composer which I enjoy, also Mexican, is Eugenio Toussaint. Toussaint has written two cello concerti and uh, has a piece based on Bach Suite Number no. 1, which is called Bach Reation, and uh, he wrote a beautiful tango, which is called uh, Tango, for Álvaro Vitrans, since it was written and dedicated to, m to myself. Another interesting composer, which we you all know, of course, uh, is um, 
Astor Piazzolla and his beautiful Grand Tango, which has become one of the most played pieces in Latin America for cello, I would say. And since we're talking about Argentina, we also have Jose Bragato with his beautiful piece called Graciela y Buenos Aires. Uh, another composer that I would like to mention is Alejandro Cardona from Costa Rica. He has um, written a lot of music, including by now nine string quartets, but he also has um, a cello concerto. And he has a piece for a solo cello, which uh, I have recorded both of them. Cardona is a very interesting composer and I I recommend that you look into his works, Alejandro Cardona. I'm sure he will be one of the most famous Latin American composers in the, in the future. You probably know Paquito de Rivera, this great jazz musician, who is also a terrific clarinet player. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting him and becoming his friend, and he wrote for me a piece called Danzón, for cello and piano, which is a charming, charming little piece. Um, I would like to mention as well Javier Montiel, the violist of my quartet, who has written some very, very beautiful pieces for cello, including one which is uh, a lot of fun to play and to listen to, which is called No Corran Que Es Peor. Uh, finally, I would like to mention two other interesting composers from Latin America. One of them who's pa passed away already. His name is Joaquin Gutierrez Heras. He wrote this beautiful piece called Canción en el Puerto, which is a music he wrote for a movie, but has become a very much played piece in Mexico for cello and piano. And he wrote another nice piece called simply two pieces, dos piezas, for cello and, and piano. And the other Mexican composer that I would like to mention is Eduardo Gamboa. Eduardo Gamboa has written a lot of film music, and, but he has also some nice pieces for cello and piano. Not very difficult, very good for, for students as well. One is called Reminiscencias, and the other one is called Azules. There is a very, very important composer in Mexico, probably the most important composer now alive. His name is Mario La Vista, who has also written a cello concerto and uh, a piece for cello solo um, called Cuadernos de Viaje. I have enjoyed working with him because he's one of those composers who really rely on the performer for writing his music and uh, therefore his music uh, ends up being very uh, well thought and very well written for the specific instrument, in this case the cello. Mario La Vista is a great composer, he's a great uh, musician and, uh, and a good friend. We have now this incredible uh, tool, the Sphinx catalog for cello, which has, uh, his whole, it, it's hosting a huge number of cello pieces and which is um, growing and growing by, by the day. So I encourage all of you to use this, this fantastic uh, uh, site that we have available now. Since when I was young and we didn't have internet, we, didn't, we had to you know, photocopy all this music and it was very difficult to, to have access to new music. This generation now has this opportunity and I encourage you to look into the Sings catalog. I would like to congratulate Germán Marcano and Horacio Contreras for this tool that they have provided for all of us, which I think uh, it's quickly becoming a very, very important part of our learning process for all cellists in Latin America.